Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. From you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Paul baptizes new believers in the name of the living Lord Jesus. They are thereby anointed by God himself, and they manifest the gifts of the Spirit. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? And they answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. In the temple of the Lord are crying glory, glory. In the temple of the Lord all are crying glory, glory. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. In the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory, glory. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The voice breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. In the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. Glory. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. 
The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness, the voice shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. In the temple of the Lord all are crying glory, glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. In the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory, glory. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. To you, Lord John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord.
Go where your best prayers take you, unclench the fists of your spirit and take it easy. Breathe deeply of the glad air and live one day at a time. Know that you are precious and learn to trust. Amen. Well, good morning to all of you, and I hope you have moved from the holidays into the new year. Um, and doing that efficiently, it's hard sometimes to get started again. It's cold, it's dark in the morning, dark in the evenings, but it's great to see all of you this morning. And, and I want to acknowledge that um, Nancy Wells, who's playing the organ this morning, um, has been our interim, um, and I want you to give her a round of applause. She has done a great job. She's hiding back there, but she's not going anywhere often. She's, she is retired, by the way, but she'll be around and we'll see her. So um, we we're, we're so, have been so blessed for her love and care of us and has such a great spirit. It's been, been remarkable, been a great transition for us. And um, in fact, I think she helped us lead us into Jason's time. So it's all good. Um, I want to, before we move too quickly to 2015, I want to gently take you back to 2014. So I want you to go with me just a little bit. So I want you to go back to the Friday before Christmas. You might think of where you are. And that noise, by the way, is a camera that needs oiling. Do you hear it? <laughs> that is not Chris whining, although his microphone, his microphone sounded like he's whining. I think he is a whiner, but it's okay. He's trying to get over it in 2015. And I swear I'm going to oil that camera this week. But I want you to go back to that Friday, and I want you to join me, go to the metro station in Alexandria. We're going to jump on, and we're going to ride into the city. So get on the metro. You're kind of thinking about Christmas. You're settling in. Everybody's ready for work. And everybody in the car is riding along, and, you know, kind of it's early in the morning. Everybody's doing their thing in their head. And you look up, and you see this young woman, nicely dressed, gray dress, black flats, sharp little sporty little black coat. And the next thing, she jumps up with this wild look on her face and gets on the floor. Believe me, the car came to a stop. I mean, wild acting. Started sweeping underneath, looking everywhere, searching, jumping up, getting back down. And people didn't know what to do. They just watched. Um, the young woman actually was not losing her mind. She had lost her engagement ring. And it had been given to her five days before that. And she was insane looking for it just panicked. All of a sudden looked down at her finger and it was gone. A special ring. Andrew, her fiance, had done that romantic thing, kneel down in the middle of the street in D.C. and give it to her and all that. It was a beautiful 1.1 carat oval diamond, all of that. What was worse or harder was that it was Andrew's mother's ring that he had given, that she had given to him on her deathbed and said, please give it to the girl that you will love and spend your life with. Well, she was crazy insane and got off at the next stop, rode back to where she started in the morning and went every step looking, bus stop, metro, couldn't find it, talked to everybody that was around, couldn't find it. Then when she finished that, she raced back to her apartment. And have you ever lost something and been in a panic? I bet you haven't. I have plenty of times. Um, you, she just tore the apartment apart. She could not find it. She knew it. She knew it had been on her finger. She was almost positive. But she flipped the bed, looked in the sinks, nothing. The hardest thing was to call her fiancé, Andrew. <laughs> and she finally mustered the courage and said, you're not going to believe this. And he was delightful. I mean, he was really sweet. He said, don't worry, sweetheart. You know, let's have some hope. There really are a lot of honest people in the world. So it's going to be okay. We'll, we'll figure this out. He came over later in that afternoon. They made posters, which was smart. Went around the neighborhood, put posters on the mailboxes, you know, everywhere, they, the, the light poles, bus stop, down at the metro station, everything they could think of. So you ready for a Christmas story? Well, about five porches down, um, a young man, well, a middle-aged man, Saranjan Kudalake, was walking his dogs the next morning at about five o'clock. And his lead dog almost jerked him off the, off the porch stoop and down into the street. And when he kind of recovered himself, he was bending over, looking down below his feet, and almost tucked underneath his porch, guess what he saw? A diamond ring. 
Well, he picked it up and he looked at it and he realized somebody is sick this morning. This is not just, and if it's real, somebody's really sick. And he thought, I I'm going to do something about this. He didn't have to wait long because as he's walking his dogs, he's seen these little flyers <laughs> everywhere. And he actually stops and reads one. So he calls the number, says, hey, did you lose a wedding ring? Or and Describe it. And, well, anyway, just to say later that morning, on Facebook was posted a picture of Haley and Andrew holding up the ring and uh, Sir John, Sarah John holding a $400 check made out in his honor to the Humane Society of Washington. What a great Christmas present. Can you imagine? What a great way to start 2015. And I really thought about that story. It was, written, it was a huge story in the Washington Post. And I thought about that story and I thought, what a way to start the year. As Tom invited us last week, what a way to start to really kind of get started in the right way, feel good about the world, feel good about the people around you. And then the last days I've been thinking about that story. I got up this morning early. I little sleepless on Saturday nights. I usually get up five-ish. I was up then. I turned on the news, CNN, knowing what I would see. A million, maybe two million people beginning to gather in the streets of Paris under the banner of Say Suisse Charlie. We are Charlie. I don't need to tell you the news or the event, do I? What has led to this? Islamic jihadist terrorists murdering 12 innocent people. Another four innocents would die in the name of religion. It really is a theme of our world. It is the context of our lives. It is a, at least one reason we have been at war for 13 years as a country. And all those people, it touched me. I wanted to see them. I woke up thinking about them. What are they doing? In the streets, hoping for unity, hoping for freedom of speech and democracy in the world, hoping to an end to violent aggression as we stand here on the threshold of 2015. And I know your spirit joins them. Mine surely does. I feel like I'm there today, to be honest. But I've thought about that the last few days. I've noticed that the news, it's captured the news' attention, which is they're selling airtime. I'm, I'm okay about that. But don't miss it, it's also captured our attention and the world's attention. And I think there's a little subtext for us this morning, really and truly, and I've been thinking about it for days, for us this morning. And it goes something like this. Religion, any religion, all religions can be practiced without spirituality. Any religious belief can be practiced without the Spirit of God being included. And I believe that's what we are saying. And I think that is our message for today. Serendipitously, I'll take it that way. I won't take it, blame it on God, I'll blame it on me. But the story from the book of Acts, our history book as it is, it is our history. It's not a made-up story. It's the history of us, of our journey. It tells it this way, that a group of disciples who've been baptized by John meet up with a group of disciples who've been baptized a little later by someone else. The latter group tells the former group almost as if you've kind of missed something. Did y'all not get that there's the Holy Spirit when you were baptized? We're not even sure what all that means. People have made a lot of it. You've probably heard sermons on it. It's a big thing in some worlds, some religious contexts. But it's a real thing. But their answer is astounding to me. And I hope you'll take, take it and look at the lesson later where you have time to read it. Because they say back, once this conversation ensues, we didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. And it struck me that was a message for me, for us, for our day. As it was in first century Christianity or the centuries that we live in now. That it's a timeless message, but a really important message. 
Some say it's only because of modern time. I think that modernity has just accelerated what's always been with us. Remember, this story comes out of the first century. So many say it's only happened because America's gone here or there. I don't know about all that. I think it's a story told forever. Religion can be practiced without God, and often is. And I ask myself, do I do that? How do I do that? When do I do that? I ask you that question not expecting a response, but I hope you'll think on it. I believe it's important. I think the book of Acts thought it was very important. You know, we live in such a demanding, busy world. I'm in your lives as much as I'm in my life. And I'm telling you, y'all go the speed of light. And you're doing a million things, traveling, going here, there. Think how hard it is for us to get a meeting together just to get with each other, to get a cup of coffee, our calendars. I'm not exaggerating, am I? And we're trying to be more, become more, do more all the time. And it's really hard for us to slow down. And there's only one way to see the spirit in life, and it's to slow down. It's to get less distracted. Whether you're young, child, middle-aged adult, my age, older adult, there's only one way to do this. And our world doesn't help us with that. We move faster. We are very rational, very scientific, all good. I wouldn't trade for anything. Well, we couldn't trade for anything. It's the world we live in, right? But it really is that our modern era has really, in many ways, for many reasons, pushed spirituality out of the center. Spirituality does get marginalized. Some say religion gets mar marginalized. I'm telling you, I think the book of Acts has it better. Spirituality gets marginalized. The spirit of God is marginalized in our conversations. Please don't feel bad. I want you to reflect with me. And please take it this way. I've been thinking about this. I'm not preaching at you. I pray I'm preaching with you of something profoundly important in our world and probably in every generation. You see, nothing is not affected. Even religion is affected, is it not? I don't know about you, but I think I do it this way. When I start kind of getting the spirit out of my faith and my practices, they become really rote. It can be like baptism being a ritual that means nothing, or communion means nothing or coming to church and sitting with you as an exercise of God invested in us, eh, just whatever. I can do that. I do it all the time. I pass through it as if it didn't happen. Not noticing you, not noticing what I've just experienced. And it's easy then there then for me then to take religion and make it a set of rules, kind of a law to live by, where I do good, be good, and act good. And I promise you, when I'm in that place, I will be superior to you every time. And you feel it. You feel it from me. I'll be superior to you. See, our lesson from Acts reminds us something else. To let that spirit of life into our faithful life. And that's what I'm thinking about today. I'm not talking about politics or world events. I'll, I'll leave those for, for smarter people to handle. But we're here to think about faith, religion, and today's spirituality, to let the Spirit of God into our lives, and then to see when we do and how we do that, what happens to us? What difference does it make? And I think we know that it does make a great deal of difference and can, because see, when our perspective changes, everything can change. Let me tell you about Annie, who's a single mom. Lives in California, works hard, raising a sweet little boy named Sam. He's six. And had saved a long time to go on vacation. And was trying to decide what to do. And Sam had fallen in love with seals that swim, right? So she was thinking, what do I do with that? And she ran across a brochure where she could go to the Sea of Cortez, right south of Tucson, and go on a seal watch. And that's what she did. Saved her money took Sam that, you know, it was hard spent money, but they went down there, had a place to stay. If you've ever seen the Sea of Cortez, it's magnificent. It's deep blue. It looks like the Mediterranean. It has waves. Um, it, it's just a magnificent setting, but the water's often cold. 
So Annie had arranged for she and Sam to go on this excursion boat, go out for the day, a dive boat, and they would snorkel. And there were some rocks, there were rock outcroppings in the Sea of Cortez. So they went out to the rocks, and, and then the boat anchored, and they were going to swim out and see these seals. And Annie laughed because she said there was, there was little Sam, he had his snorkel on, he had big snorkel, great big mask. He had on pink floaties and a blue pair of trunks, and he looked like a mixture of, of uh, Jacques Cousteau and Pee Wee Herman, she said. <laughs> So get the peak field. But he was, he was just on the edge waiting, could not wait to get in the water. They finally arrived. All the other adults jumped off, and she said, well, I can take him. So she got in the water. They started swimming, and the currents there are pretty strong. The water is actually very deep and very cold most of the time. And she realized she got about halfway to, the, to the, what's called the, the seal rock, and she couldn't get there. And she went, oh, my gosh. So she had to swim back to the boat. And as soon as she got little Sam up, Sam realized what was going on. He was not going to get to see the seals. And he did the little boy thing, little hunched back, head down. And she felt terrible. But she didn't know what to do because she was not a good enough swimmer to take care of both of them. And they sat there a few minutes. And she said, she really said, God, please do something. We have worked so hard. We need this so badly. And she just sat there, not knowing what was going to happen. In a few minutes, the assistant snorkel, the assistant dive master, came over and said, why are y'all here? And she explained, and he said, this is not a problem. You, you go ahead. Leave Sam with me. And she was like, he said, no, no, no. He said, I do this all the time. I'll be glad. I'll take him. I'm a great swimmer. He's safe with me. Let me have it. So she did. She jumped back in the water, swam out with all the ad other adults that were swimming around, watching all the seals. And she'd been out there a little bit, and she popped up, and she looked back toward the boat and through her goggles. She could look back, and she went, and guess what she saw on the deck? pink and blue, and she went, uh-oh, so, and then got this sinking feeling. She swam back to the boat. She gets out, and what had happened was they got back in the water. It was too cold. They got halfway, and little Sam just couldn't do it. The, the conditions were not great. But the, dive, the assistant dive master had been great because he was sitting there. He's having a Coke. He's having some potato chips. He seemed to ride his rain. He was actually okay, and, but, you know, a little disappointed. And all the other adults were out swimming, and so she sat with Sam, and it seemed to be all right. And the most amazing thing then happened that the dive master said never happens. All the seals at Seal Rock swam to their boat. And in fact, all the adults followed the seals back to the boat. So they all ended up on the boat, watching the seals around the boat. And the dive master said, I've never seen this. And then on the way back, another amazing thing happened. Some of you have seen it if you've been on the big water. Yeah, so the boat's kind of clipping along, really moving. All of a sudden, the dolphin come, and they start jumping the wakes, the bow spirit, like this. Well, they got back to their hotel that night and had dinner, and Sam had brought coloring book and stuff, and he sat down, and he's drawing a picture. And by the way, this is a real story. So he sits down, and he starts drawing a picture. She comes over and says, well, Sam, that's great because you want to remember things, so draw it. So he drew seals where they also, mom, there were dolphins. And then here's what Sam wrote at the bottom of his picture. I am going to see the seals. I took a boat to see the seals, but I could not make it to the shore. But they came to me. And on the ride back, we saw some dolphins. And it was magic. Jesus said, we will catch the spirit as a child. Catches the spirit. We're invited to be children today. Childlike, but I believe not childish. Childlike. With that sense of the spirit being around us. And I really think one of the first steps, we talked about this in Sunday school, all of us in Sunday school this morning, that one of the things that has to happen for us is some awareness so that we believe it's possible. In other words, what's going on is these disciples tell the disciples of John, you're going to have to start looking for the Spirit. You're not creating it. It is all around you. It is in the people around you. But you're going to have to look for it. You've got some work to do. I wonder if that is not our work to do. That when we search for it, we know what the fruits of the Spirit are. 
I promise you, you're here. You're not at the Silver Spoon eating breakfast. Oh, Silver Spoon's not there anymore. That used to be my favorite. Go to Silver Spoon, read the New York Times, you know, have the secular world Sunday morning. Um, no, you're here. You are here. Searching for that peace and harmony, wholeness, understanding, meaning, context, connection, God. That's why we're here. And wanting to catch the Spirit. I want it more every day. I bet you do too. Because the Spirit shifts my perspective. I see things I would not see. I might even do things I would not do. I'm going to invite some of you to a simple exercise that many do. I mean this. Sit down once a day for the next days. Don't let yourself off. You who are so busy, sit quietly somewhere. Get away from your phone. You know it's hard. Push the TV computer screen away. Bit your office, no matter where it is. And I want you to sit and quietly think about the Spirit. If you can't do that in your life, I want you to think about the people around you and think where you have seen the Spirit in a person around you or the person in an event like we're seeing this morning in Paris. See the Spirit and then let it do its work. Experience the magic of it. It does bring some into life because it brings us into the life that God has for us. God with us. Every day. Every place. And with that baby cooing, we say amen. As we stand, let us reaffirm our faith by saying together the Nicene Creed found beginning on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, 
that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. This morning we offer our thanksgivings for the work and ministry of the St. John's Flower Guild, for the work and ministry of Church of the Nativity in Fort Oglethorpe, for the flowers in the chapel given to the glory of God and in memory of Ruth Lamberson Russell, and for the flowers in the church given in memory of Brian Lee Bodenheimer. Are there other thanksgivings to be offered? Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them the courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. This morning we offer our prayers for Rick Boyd, Sam Browder, Betty Curtis, Jean Davis, Tony DeValentin, Wade Fry, Susan Ivey, Peter Keyes, Libby Reed Langley, Janice McClellan, Mike McCoy, Bob Page, Bob Strait, Dan White, Bo William, Virginia Walliver, Shirley Killian, Lou Laxton, James Marash, Jean O'Connor, Doug Poulter, and Pete White. Are there others to be named? We pray for those who are serving our country in the military, especially those deployed in Afghanistan, as we pray for the civilians of Afghanistan and for all victims of war. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. This morning we remember Carmen West, William McClure Keeling, and Rita Finn. Are there others to be named? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now using the form on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. In thought, Lord, and deed, by all we have done, and all we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we have never been. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our mercy and our Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
great thanksgiving continues on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. 
sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us all with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So now go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia.